Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail And on that show, it's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time? Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. Renzo, it's absolutely fantastic to be here with you. Um, Thank you. I guess kicking off with the obvious, um, can you talk to us a little bit about the context of this film, both in terms of its place in the franchise as a follow-on from Bumblebee and the 90s set? It is Bumblebee's 87, this is 94. It's the continuum that where the Bay movies start in 07. So... Um, you know, 94, we were going to do this somewhere in the early 90s because we wanted to do it as a sequel to Bumblebee, sequentially at minimum. Um, 94 is just one of the great years for hip-hop, so it really is what made us choose 94. In terms of choices, can you talk about your choice of director because mm -hmm. it's a fantastic one. Yeah. In Bumblebee, we, did, we really accomplished a lot of emotional uh, intimacy, and we wanted to carry that into the larger franchise. And so... We were looking for a director who's done great character work, and he's done, Stephen has done great work in both television and film. Uh, when we met with him, what was so exciting was he was a Beast Wars fan, uh, like diehard Beast Wars fan. So he related to what we were doing like he, in a way he had it in his DNA. And I think, obviously, in terms of the lore and the new uh, Transformers characters that we get to enjoy in this, can you talk about what was important for you about capturing that particular part of the Transformers mm -hmm. franchise? Well, the mythology is really important, and it's important to the fans, and it's important to us. Um, the Maximals are just a great group of characters, and the trick is really actually trying to avoid to introduce too many of them so you don't get to know any of them. Um, and that was really the biggest challenge in a way. It's like, okay, which ones are we going to pick, and which ones are we going to highlight? Um, and in that way, I think that, you know, when you really boil it down to, we're, it, we are, in some respects, responding to which characters the fans have been saying, where's Optimus Primal? Um, and at the same time, we're responding to what we feel the story needs. And talking about making things bigger and more integrated, obviously, by the time people watch this interview, they will know that we are now very much firmly planting ourselves in a shared Hasbro universe. Uh, I guess, can you talk a little bit about for you, the possibilities that represents not just for Transformers, but obviously for G.I. Joe and, and the wonderful stories sure. there to tell. Sure. Well, look, I look at this as a, a continuation of the Transformers experience, bringing the Joes into it. It's not a crossover movie, as I understand the term crossover, but it is going to offer the audience some new human characters. And so that's really, I think, really exciting. And for G.I. Joe, um, to be part of this, I think it can only help us on the G.I. Joe side. And in terms of the G.I. Joe journey, I mean, obviously we've had uh, wonderful films so far. Um, what's your ambition for that side of uh, the story? I mean, would you like to see the full-blown crossover film that I think fans have long debated, or do you think G.I. Joe needs to keep telling its own stories? You know, it's, what's tricky about the idea of a crossover, in my opinion, is I worry that you can't tell either half well, because it's so much. You know, I'm tired of these films being so long. In general, a lot of blockbusters, I think, really overstate, over, they're just, they're just too long. So that's my concern about a crossover, and there are plenty of Joe, Joe stories to be told. 
I think just finally on the subject of this film, I think obviously one of the biggest challenges for the Transformers films is always balancing the Autobot stories, the uh, Transformers story with the human story. Can you talk a little bit about how this film does that? Because it's obviously, it's a, it's a tough thing to juggle yeah. those balls. Well, it's particularly hard to keep the five and six foot creatures alive in front of these 35 foot creatures that can fight and have, you know, amazing, amazing uh, uh, skills. You know, in this case, what was really f actually a great thing was there's a conflict going on between the humans and the Autobots in a way that we've never done it before. And so that conflict ironically creates a fusion, you know, because you, you experience this and eventually this. And so I think in some ways it's the deepest experience we've had about how these two races, I guess, um, can coexist. I can't wait to see where it takes us next. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.